Kraczącą Eurowizją 1950 Abba's breakthrough with Waterloo wasn't just an unusual victory at the Eurovision Song Contest. Already then, it received an outstanding, tremendous reception above and beyond Eurovision. This weekend, we are celebrating 50 years. In this video, we explore the creation of Waterloo. The story of this important musical piece couldn't be more eclectic and exciting. So many components came together. The stars were aligned for pop music history. Waterloo was created during the cold winter months of November and December 1973 when it was announced that Björn, Benny and manager Stig Andersson were invited again to submit a song for Sweden's pre-selection of the Eurovision Song Contest. The chorus was written at Björn and Benny's songwriting cabin on the island Vixö. The verses were written at Benny and Frida's home in Valentuna. By that point, the members of ABBA had submitted and performed songs for Sweden's Eurovision pre-selection for many years. During that road, they gradually came together and it became more and more obvious that they had to reach this goal of making it international as Swedish artists, simply because they knew how much artistic integrity and talent they had. Especially their manager Stig Andersson. He knew and he pushed continuously to establish Swedish pop music as a serious force in the groundbreaking shape of ABBA. For Waterloo, it was Stig who wrote the first Swedish lyrics. In Abba's early years, he was frequently involved with the lyric writing, mainly shaping a framework and themes and especially finding catchy titles. In this case, he came up with the title Waterloo. For the scheduled Eurovision appearance, it was an important choice for the title to be short and quickly visible on the TV screen. He needed three syllables. The working title of Waterloo was Honey Pie. Suddenly, one Saturday morning in mid-December, he opened a book. This is the historic book, a Swedish book of reference, where Stig Andersson caught the title Waterloo. The Battle of Waterloo became a metaphor for a girl who is surrendering to the love of her admirer. Based on this premise, Björn wrote the English lyrics. He initially struggled with the lyric writing for this song. Around the same time, Abba wrote and recorded the melodramatic ballad Asta Manana. Initially, this song was ABBA's shortlist candidate for Eurovision as well. It was exactly what they needed. A slow song, a lone female singer, typical for the Schlager contest. But then they had this up-tempo, cheerful song with two female voices, that major key composition, Waterloo. Maybe another interesting contender for the Eurovision Song Contest. Not because it fit into the show, but because it didn't. With Waterloo, Björn and Benny took a risk. This song had the chance to stand out. And for that, the recording of the song had to be nailed. On the 17th of December 1973, ABBA entered the familiar metronome recording studio in Stockholm to record the song. They were actually about to reach the end of the recording sessions for their second album, which eventually became Waterloo. The band for the entire album and for the recording of Waterloo features ABBA's core studio musicians. Benny Andersson on keyboards, Janne Schaffer on guitar, Rutger Gunnarsson on bass and Ola Bronkert on drums. The recording sessions for the song show how much ABBA's musicians were also an important key element for their recordings. It was guitarist Janne Schaffer who came up with the unforgettable bass and guitar riff of Waterloo. It was inspired by one of the songs from his then recent solo album. The rest of the song was an intricate mixture of Phil Spector aesthetics, a massive wall of sound with blasting saxophones, heavy guitars on reverb and sharp voices, the unique combination of Frida and Agnetta's different vocal range. On top of that, the song was colored by the British glam rock vibe from the time. The song See My Baby Jive by British band Wizard was cited by ABBA as a major influence on Waterloo. Within one day, the basic track of the song was finished. In January and February 1974, ABBA continued to work on the song with multi-layered vocal recordings. This was followed by excessive mixing sessions. ABBA tried out more than 30 different mixes until they nailed it to their satisfaction. Waterloo was shaped and reshaped with different overdubs of Mellotron, Minimoog, saxophones, different harmony arrangements, 
different effects on vocals like echo and instrumental mixes, from which one was chosen for the performance at the Eurovision Song Contest. One of the last early mixes before the final version was accidentally released on the first pressings of the Waterloo single and has been reissued on recent CD releases as an alternate mix. At the Swedish pre-selection, ABBA won by a mile. They had won over their native audience and were off to represent the country for Europe. The song was just perfect. But at the Eurovision Song Contest, everything was different about ABBA. Not only were their costumes and Björn's star-shaped guitar unusually glamorous and conspicuous for Eurovision standards back in 1974, but by the overall appearance. They incorporated simple choreography with Frida and Agneta moving in sync. Here they were, bound together in voice and in visual. By the standards of the time, at this show, all of that was completely left field, on an audio-visual level. This performance was really an adventurous trip that would indicate the future of ABBA's story and music. Björn and Benny said, We were mainly in to show ourselves, to show people that there was a band up in Sweden that can write pop music, not Eurovision Song Contest music. And this is exactly what they did. The success of Waterloo went way beyond Eurovision. Waterloo became ABBA's first of their nine number one hits in the UK. Unusually for a Eurovision song, it transcended Europe and became successful in Australia, Canada, New Zealand, Rhodesia and reached number 6 in the United States. Waterloo sold 6 million copies worldwide and became one of the best-selling singles of all time. The album became the first album of a foreign Eurovision artist to chart in the UK. Once again, this not only goes back to the artistic craft of Björn, Benny, Frida and Agneta, their musicians and engineer Michael B. Dretov. It was also the year-long experience of manager Stig Anderson, who had established contacts and contracts across the world, deals with labels, colleagues and friends, which made it all possible for Waterloo to be spread across the continent immediately as the victory happened. The single and album had been released four weeks earlier. And finally, Waterloo is also special because it has the most alternate versions of an ABBA song that were released. ABBA recorded the song in Swedish and German, which became their final regular studio recording in both languages. They even performed the German version twice on television. It was also recorded in French, which became ABBA's first and only recording in French. A Spanish version was reported to have been recorded, but it has never surfaced and it is not entirely clear if it was ever recorded. For the one and only time, ABBA also recorded an exclusive jingle based on the song for BBC Radio 1 in 1974. This recording surfaced only nine years ago. ABBA recorded three more special versions of the song for Top of the Pops. Two of them were performed in April 1974, the third one in December. In 1975, they re-recorded a fourth special version for the UK's Seaside Special. In concert, ABBA performed this song live until their final concert tour in 1980. In ABBA's most recent groundbreaking concert experience, Voyage, the song is featured towards the end of the show as one of the climactic numbers and is introduced by all four members of ABBA. It takes us right back to that stage in Brighton to 1974. It all happened 50 years ago, but now, 50 years on, it is still happening. We are not only celebrating this milestone, but I know that so many fans are celebrating their 50th anniversary when they first saw and heard ABBA and felt that something special is happening right now, something magical. Even for me, it is an anniversary year, 20 years since ABBA came into my life, in the shape of puppets in their so-called last video ever. This video was in turn a celebration of ABBA's victory with Waterloo. So here we are, all together, as excited and thrilled as ever, united in the appreciation and love for ABBA. I say thank you to everyone for staying and listening, and congratulations on 50 years of Waterloo, 50 years of being a fan. Let me know your thoughts and feelings in the comments below. Alright, until then, hello!